Are you ready for We Whisk You a Merry Christmas, our next big group project together? Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and if you haven't joined me before for one of our group projects, it's time. We are going to start on our next project, which is We Whisk You a Merry Christmas. It is the Kimberbell quilt. This is a few years old. It's a retired design, but our sponsor was able to get some for us. So let's talk about a few things here. So first off, we are going to do this all together, step by step. I'm going to show you and each day we'll have a tutorial that has um, that specific project for the day. We're going to do it all together. It's not going to be scary. It's super fun to do together. If you haven't joined the Kristen Creates group on Facebook, I highly recommend it. I post a lot of information in there. There's a lot of camaraderie, really fun with all of the people in that group. So it's Kristen Creates on Facebook. That's one thing. The other thing is if you haven't subscribed to this channel, do it now. Okay, so that will give you when you click that little bell, you click the subscribe button and then you click the little bell and it gives you notifications whenever a tutorial is posted. So you'll always know that day's project. Okay, so make sure to do that. Subscribe. Make sure to like the channel, like the video if you are enjoying the content. It helps the channel somehow. All right, so we are gonna start soon, but first we need to prep all of our fabrics. So this is our prep video, everything to get ready for our group project. So like I said, we're gonna do We Wish You a Merry Christmas. It's gonna be so fun. There are, I think I counted 26 blocks in this project. And like I said, we're gonna do them all together. You don't have to worry about anything. Let me see, I'm just confirming. Um, 26. There are 26 blocks and that's not counting the inner borders. There's inner border and sashing. Um, there is the outer border, the backing, the binding. Uh, we're going to do all of it and there's some embellishments too. All right, so like I said, we're going to start by prepping. I haven't started yet. I'm going to give you time to do it too. Um, if you haven't ordered your supplies, so our sponsor for this project is Your Best Friend's Quilt Shop in Idaho. They're um, somewhere up north where there's lots of snow, Grangeville, I think it was called. So Your Best Friend's Quilt Shop. If you go to their website, I will add a link here of how you get to their website. The only thing is I just checked it and there's actually just stabilizers on there right now. Um, I spoke with her, our sponsor earlier, and they are sold out, but they're trying to figure out if they can get some more for us since we haven't even started. And I know a lot of people want to join in on this. So if you purchase purchased this years ago, grab that, all right? Find it in your stash, all of the different pro products for this project. Um, otherwise, reach out to our sponsor, Your Best Friends Quilt Shop, and see if they're able to get some for you. They're supposed to be letting us know in the Facebook group as well, all right? So let's go ahead and get started just talking about what we need. So whenever we do a prep, I'm going to go over each of the fabrics so that you know what is what, because sometimes that little tiny box that shows you the picture of the fabric isn't quite enough sometimes. So I'm going to go over each and every one of them so you don't have to worry about it. What I was hoping to do in this video is to tell you any substitutions. So I have the original kit. I bought it years ago, um, and many of the fabrics have been discontinued, but our sponsor was able to get them and she did ship out all of the orders from when we did our announcement video um, but she was going to send me the fabric scraps of any changes so that I could tell you so we're going to use this one instead of this one if you got the kit a little later um, but I haven't received my package yet from our sponsor so I'm going to go ahead and just add that information as we work on the project so like I said every day I will have um, a video of what we're going to work on that day and in that one is where I'll tell you if there's any substitutions. All right. So, um, and there may not be any, I don't know. I don't have that information yet, but I will certainly let you know at the time that we do the project. All right. So as far as a start date, I'm thinking it, there's about, 
a lot of fabrics. I think it was like 38 fabrics. So um, we're going to be prepping those by ironing on fusible stabilizer onto the back. There's 36 fabrics. That's a lot. So it will take some time to cut all of those. You can choose. There's a few things you can do. So you can choose to prep each day. When I tell you these are the fabrics we're going to use for this day, for this block, you can do them then or you can do it all ahead of time and have them in packets. That's what I do. I like to do that and have them that. then every time it's playtime I just grab my packet and I'm ready to go so these packets I found on Amazon and you get like 35 of them in a, in a bag and they work so great and you'll see I, I show them throughout the video series so I will add a link here of where you can buy the packets and like I said I think there's like 35 in a packet and you get a, they're they're so easy they work really really well and then what I use is this old box it's from Target ages ago but I found one because they fit just right I found one that is the same dimensions and um, I will add a link for the box here if you want a box to be able to quickly and easily hold all of your packets it makes it really simple to keep them all organized so the packets and the box will help you to be able to prep and get ready for your project. The other thing I do is I use blue tape and I just put blue tape on the packet. They, these packets are dry erase packets, but I don't ever write on my packets because my concern is that if you're using dry erase pens, the dry erase could come off onto your fabric. All right, so I don't do that. I use blue tape. I fold over the top of the, the little edge of the blue tape and I put that on there and then it's easy to come off. I used to use the Kimberbell tape, but it's more sticky and so it leaves quite a bit of residue on it and I found blue tape works easier, all right? And so I will add a link for the blue tape and also the, the blue tape holder. I'll put both of those underneath this video in the video notes so that you can get those if you need them if you haven't already gotten those. All right, so products that we're gonna need. So we're obviously going to need the booklet. The book has the CD in it, all right? And I mentioned this during the announcement video that you will need the book and the CD. It was available from our sponsor and I'm going to hopefully find out soon if she's able to get more or not. Um, but hopefully you purchase them during the announcement video or at the time of the announcement video. The other thing is that there is a thread kit for specific to the we wish you a merry christmas and underneath this video in the video notes i have a list of all of the thread colors that are in the packet in case you want to look through your stash and see if you already have these colors um, otherwise our sponsor is hopefully going to order more but i'm not absolutely sure of that yet she's getting back to us soon on that the other thing that you will need is the embellishment kit. So this also is a retired item, but she was able to get these. The specific, actually she was able to procure them. So she was able to get everything that's inside of these packets and it wouldn't be in the official packet, but it would be the same items. All right, so I will try to add a list of the items that are in the embellishment kit in case you weren't able to get a, an embellishment kit. You could check your stash and see if you have the items. It's like the clear vinyl and the, the glitter, um, let's see, felt, a chalk pencil, flexible foam interfacing, pom-poms for the marshmallows, and of course the buttons. Aren't those so cute? Look at the buttons. So, so cute. I'm so excited to work on this project. So again, this is retired, but our sponsor did get a bunch of them available. She made them um, to be able to send out to the customers that purchased after our announcement video. And I'm not sure if she's going to be able to get more or not, but I'm hoping to get that information soon. And I will post it in our Facebook group in Kristen Crates when I have more information. All right, the other thing that you're gonna need is stabilizer. So the fusible stabilizer, this is what I use to put on the back of all of the fabrics. Now you, I get this question every time, so I'm just gonna to tell you now. You can either choose to cut out your fabric and cut out your fusible stabilizer and iron it on, or you can put it on the entire piece of fabric and then cut. The fastest way obviously is to do that, to put all of the fusible stabilizer on the entire fabric and then to cut it. There are some that you don't wanna put it on, like the binding. I don't put it on the backing either, some people do but I don't. So I will, I will note that as well, but fusible backing you want on the back of your fabrics. Okay. And then you want some stabilizer for in the hoop. 
I like to use the Kimberbell Light Mesh Cutaway. There's this regular size and then there's this long size, all right? So this is when we're going to use our big hoop. If you have a big hoop, sometimes I will join uh, blocks together and that will be optional. You can choose to do that or you can choose to do them separately. Either way will work fine. All right, but this long one is for those bigger hoops. And then the other thing that you need is batting. Make sure to get your batting. The Kimberbell Project Batting is by far my favorite. I absolutely love it. It's got the perfect loft. It's super easy to cut. It works really, really well on these quilt projects. So you're gonna wanna have that on hand as well. So our sponsor does have the batting and the stabilizer in stock. I saw it on their website just this afternoon. Um, it's all the other project supplies that I did not see, and I'm hoping to get some more information about that. All right, so those are the products that we're going to need. So now I'm going to jump into the fabrics and tell you uh, which fabrics that uh, we're going to stabilize, which ones that they are. Let's start with that. All right. I'm going to tell you which ones they are, and I'm just going to go through the book. So on the book, a couple things here. There is on page three, it starts, there's a couple of pages, but there's pages of each of the fabrics. All right. I've written little notes on mine, but um, I'm going to go over these just so you know what they are. And then um, on, it finishes on page five. And on page five, in fact, you're going to need this. So the embellishments, it lists all of the embellishments. And I'm not going to go over each of one, each of those because hopefully you've got the embellishment kit that our sponsor did create for us. Um, but each of those are listed on page five as well. And then you have an option for your, your backing, I believe it was. Oh, for the outer borders. That's what it was. For the outer borders, there's a white or a black. I'll show you that when we go through each of the fabrics. Those are optional. There's a couple other little notes, and I'm going to go over each of those and um, on each of the videos as well when I'm telling you about that block. All right, page six and seven, I want to point out that there's this cut guide. The cut guide is really helpful. I always use this. Um, so it tells you how to get the most out of your fabric, all right? Sometimes you might just have a little bit of fabric and yet you've got some big cuts. So it'll tell you when you lay your fabric out, you want to cut this one here, the first one, the biggest one, blah, blah, blah. It tells you exactly. And this is just a really good guide to be able to know how to get the most use out of your fabrics, all right? And then some of these, there are optionals and it looks like they actually told us that on here. I didn't notice that until just now. There's little red stars and I'm going to go over those optionals when I go over the fabrics, but it does show those on this guide as well. That's really helpful. So like I said, there's some optionals and that's because if you have the embellishment kit, you're probably going to use like the glitter vinyl, but if you don't have that, there is information in this guide also to use fabric if you choose to do that as well or instead of, sorry. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over each of the fabrics and just real quick. I'm just going to show you which one it is so that you know instead of looking at that tiny little picture. All right, so number one. So these are all in order. I put a number all the way straight down. This will tell you which one is which. All right, so number one is the black with white dots. It's a much bigger piece but it, we also use it later I think it was binding it's our binding so I have my bigger piece later um, but I have a little piece here just to show you what it is so the black with white dots that first one so I want to point this out if you notice I wrote a little optional note here this is that one so in our embellishment kit there is chalkboard fabric and I'm going to use that because it's in my embellishment kit but if you don't have that chalkboard fabric then it gives you the option to use this same fabric the black with white dots all right so you can see the first two cuts on here are optional so I'm not going to cut those but you have that option if you're not going to use the chalkboard um, vinyl. All right, and then I'm sure on that guide, that page six guide, it has the optional. So see that little red dot, the little red star on there? That means that you don't need to cut those unless you're choosing to take that option. All right, so that's the first one. Number one, black with white dots. All right, move that out of the way. The second one, number two, is the black with big white dots. All right, that's number two fabric. All right. I should have brought my water. 
number three. This is a directional fabric. I want to point that out. That's another reason why it's really good to use that cut guide because it shows you how to cut it to make sure that you're getting the right direction. All right. This is number three. We need a fat 16th of this one. <clears throat> I should mention that too. So I'm going to go back. Number one, it's a fat 16th, all right, the black with white dots. Number two, also a fat 16th, the black with big white dots. And then number three, fat 16th, and uh, this is the one that is directional with all those words on it. All right, number four, I love this one. I want to make stockings out of this one. I think it's so pretty. This one is a, is just a fabric scrap, and you can see I like it so much. I bought quite a bit of it. I like this one, and I think this is retired too, so if you find it, get more if you if you like this one. So this is number four, and it's we just need a fabric scrap of it, and that means like um, we need two, two cuts that are two and a half by two and a half, so just a small piece, like a five by five, six by six would work just fine. All right, I will also tell you as we do the blocks um, in this prep video, which ones that we have different cut sizes. So I want to point that out. That's one thing that a lot of people wait for the prep video in case there are different cut sizes that I recommend because on border blocks, I always recommend cutting them bigger, but there aren't any. There is a patchwork. There's a patchwork. There's two. I think um, I think it was two, two that are patchwork. But um, those, we're going to cut the same size because we're going to sew them together before we quilt them. So there aren't any changes on size for the cutting on these that I have found yet. And I'll tell you if there are, but so far, no. All right, and I'll know more after I do all of my prep, but I'm pretty certain there aren't any border blocks. So, all right, this one is number five. And again, we just need a fabric scrap of this one. So um, this one is number five. You can see it's brown with a bunch of cute Christmassy things on it. All right, and then number six is the orange peel. I don't know what it's called, lattice, maybe a lattice. Um, but this is number six, and we need a fat 16th of this one. This is the one that we're going to use for the rolling pin. All right, number seven is um, just a fabric scrap. This is the one with all of the Christmas designs on it, and this one is on a gray background. All right, this is number seven, and... Um, this one is also discontinued, I'm almost certain. So if you find it and you really like it, grab it. Um, and this one is for the patchwork blocks. So just a fabric square of this one, or a fabric scrap, I should say, number seven. All right, and then number eight, this is an another directional one, so be careful when you're cutting it to make sure you're getting the right size. Um, this one we need a fat quarter of, so it's on uh, several blocks, and it's that really cute gray with the Christmassy words, baking words on it. Very cute. All right, that's number nine. Nope, sorry, number eight. Sorry about that. Number eight. All right, and then number nine is gray with white dots. Okay, plain gray with white dots on it. This is number nine, and we only need a fabric scrap of this one as well. All right. And then number 10 is the green um, plaid. This one, let's see what size. We just need a fabric scrap. This is number 10, all right? I think this one has been discontinued too, but I'm not absolutely sure. All right, and then number 11 is the green with all the Christmas designs on it, all right? And that one we need a fabric scrap as well, okay? So not too much of it. And then number 12 is the plaid. And this one is a green plaid. We need a fat quarter. This one is we're going to use on several blocks, all right? Um, or maybe blocks. Looks like it's on a couple of the block backgrounds and then a couple of appliques. So number 12, we need a fat quarter of this one. All right, and then number 13 is the green with large white dots. And we just need a fabric scrap of this one. It's just a small piece. And then number 14 is the green and white lines. This is a directional fabric, so make sure to check how you're cutting it to make sure you're getting it the right direction. This is for number 14, and we need a fat eighth of this one, all right? And then number 15 is the um, green with floral on it. I believe this was from the Make Yourself at Home quilt, but um, this one... Uh, we just need a fat 16th of it. It is for number 15, all right? And number 16 
is the green with multiple dots on it, different colored dots. We need a fat 16th. I'm only showing you a little bit of it because I have it also for later. I think we, we use it for our inner border sashing. And so um, I have a larger piece for later when I show you. But this one is for um, the stocking cookie and the tree cookie. So just, I think it's just for the applique pieces. So two small pieces, um, but it does say a fat 16th of this. They're both small cuts, so that fat 16th must also be for the inner borders. I'm guessing, I'm not sure, I'll tell you when we get there. This is number 16. All right, and then for number 17, this one we start on the next page. So we're on page four now, top of page four. And this one is a very light gray with lines all over it. All right, this is number 17. And there's a different, there's a few different of these. So just make sure you're getting the right one. It's the light gray. There is a tan colored one also, not in this project, but in your stash. So just check to make sure you're pulling the right one. It's a light gray with lines all over it. We need a fat quarter of this, and this is number 17. All right, and then number 18, is the pink with red flowers on it. And this one, we need a fat 16th. This is number uh, 18 for this one, all right? And then number 19 is that red lattice. Yep, there we go, the red one. And this one is for number 19. We just need a fabric scrap of this, a small piece three by two for this one, all right? So a small piece for this number 19. And then for number 20, it is that plaid, similar to the green one and the brown one that we had. Isn't that pretty? I love this. Super Christmassy. I think that would be so cute on a stocking. All right, this one, let's see. We need a fat quarter. This is number 20. I believe this has been retired, by the way. So if you have it, hold on tight to it. Um, fat quarter, Don't. that doesn't mean don't be afraid to use it. Because I know a lot of people are like, oh, this is so pretty. I don't want to use it. Use it. <laughs> It's like eat the dessert, you know, live, live your life. All right, sorry. <laughs> Fat quarter of this one. This is number 20. All right, and then 21 is the red with big white dots. And this one we need a fat 16th of. All right, fat 16th. And then number 24 is also a directional. This is that same wording one, but on a red background. So a directional one, be careful how you cut it. Uh, we want a fat 16th for this one. It's just one cut. It's a for a background piece, eight and a half by 10 and a half. All right. So, uh, but it is directional. So make sure that you're cutting it the, the right direction. And it will show you, like I said, on pages six and seven, it will show you how to cut those directional fabrics. All right. Number 23 is the uh, another directional. This is red and white stripes. This one we need a fat 16th. This is number 23, all right? And then number 24 is the red with multi dots. And this one we need a fat eighth, all right? A fat eighth, this is number 24. And then number 25 is the red with scrolls all over it. It's not directional. This one we need a fat 16th of, all right? Fat 16th for number 25. And then number 26, this one, I had to go buy some extra of this one. This one is, I don't remember if it's called tuft, tufted, something, I don't remember, but it's got stars all over it. All right, and this, I think it was called tuft, tufted, something like that. I wonder if there's never names on these, right? I never know what to call them. I always make up my own name, so <laughs> I get used to it. All right, red with stars all over it. And this one is number 26, and we need a fat quarter of this one, all right? And then, let's see, just two more stacks of these. This one, isn't this pretty? The black and white uh, plaid. This one is for our patchwork blocks and for our apron. We need a fat 16th. That's number 27, a fat 16th of this one. All right. And then the, oops, I almost pulled from the wrong stack here. This one is um, houndstooth. So a white houndstooth, white on white. All right. And this one, is, we need a fat eighth. It is number 28, a fat eighth. 
All right. Oh, we need 15 of these little tiny blocks. That's going to be fun to cut. <laughs> All right. And then number 20. What is that? 29. I can't read my own writing. Number 29. This one is really hard to see. So I'm just going to tell you that it is that lattice. All right. So it is white. I'm going to pull that brown one to show you. It has this um, design on it, that lattice, but it's really hard to see on camera. All right. So this is number 29 and we need a fat quarter of it. All right. And then number 30 is the white with colored dots on it. And this one we need a fat quarter and that means that there's a lot of cuts on this one i hope i have enough i should hopefully um, this is number 30 and we need a fat quarter of this one all right and then next page uh, we're on page five now top of page five and number 31 fabric this is white with snowflakes on it Ah, there you go. Now you can see it. There you go. See that snowflake? How pretty is that? All right. So this is number 31 and we want a fat quarter of this one. All right. 31. And then our last one for our blocks. This one is a yellow with scrolls all over it. And this one, we just need a fabric scrap. It's for one piece for our bell cookie frosting. And this is going to be number 32, just a fabric scrap of this one. All right. And then after that, we go into the borders and the binding and the backing. So for that, we're for our sashing, we are going to have this green with colored dots all over it. This is that one I showed you earlier that we do use a little piece of it for something else. But then we also need it for our inner border sashing. And we need a quarter of a yard for that. So a long piece for our sashings, okay? Um, one, one quarter yard for the green with colored dots on it, okay? And then for our outer border. So this is that one I was telling you, you have options. You can use, and I don't know what our sponsor was able to get or if she um, used something else. I will let you know when we get there for sure. But um, this one, you can either have it in black or in white. You can see I have a little bit of both. I don't remember if it was because I was using it for a different project or I couldn't make up my mind. Um, I did buy this when it first came out a long time ago. I love to bake. So when I saw this one, I was like, oh my gosh, that is so me. I need this one. So so I did buy this a long time ago. So this is the original fabric. It's definitely been discontinued. It's hard to get. Um, but our sponsor said that she was able to get um, most, if not all, of the fabric. So those of you that purchased after I did my announcement video, you probably have received some. Um, again, I haven't heard back from our sponsor yet on what she's able to make going forward or if she is. But I will let you know. Um, or ask her to post in our Facebook group. So again, pretty in either black or white, totally your choice for outer borders. So we need a half of a yard of one of these, not both. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, and then for our binding, it's the black with white dots. Remember I showed you that I had this little piece. That's because I was holding the rest for our binding so I could show it to you again. So this one, we need three eighths of a yard. All right. So almost a half a yard, three eighths of a yard, black with white dots. It's for our binding. All right. And then for our backing, I don't know um, if our sponsor, I'm guessing she's using something else for backing or offering something else for backing because this is discontinued and hard to find. But you do whatever you use for your backing. The original one is this gray with the Christmas items on it. Um, but you could use whatever works for you. But for the backing, you want one and a half yards. Whichever fabric you use, one and a half yards. Make sure not to get all the way through this project and, the, and then go, oh gosh, I forgot about backing. So one and a half yards, whatever you choose for your backing or whatever our sponsor is offering. Um, and this is the original one. All right. One and a half yards. So that's fabric number 36. Um, I didn't mention the numbers for, um, this inner border I'm calling number 33, the outer borders, either this or this I'm calling those number 34 and then our binding number 35 and then our backing is number 36. 
All right. And then, like I said, there are embellishments as well. And our sponsor did um, create packets for us um, for our embellishment kit. If you have the original, you're all set. Um, but our sponsor was able to get those buttons as well. Everything that she said that she had everything for the embellishment kits. They're not on the website right now, so she is sold out. And um, I'll ask her to let you know if she's able to create more. So those are the fabrics. Um, I will, I'm going to start prepping mine and I'll tell you if there's any changes to cut sizes. Um, one thing is I always recommend cutting your inner borders and your outer borders longer than what they say in the book, not fatter, but longer, but these in the book, it says, um, to cut them with a fabric. So they're already going to be long enough. So you don't have to worry about that. There are not any border blocks, the plain blocks that we usually dress up. Sometimes there aren't any of those. Um, so you don't have to cut any of those larger. There are the patchwork blocks, but you don't want to cut those bigger because we're going to sew them. Them together before we quilt them and so you want those to be the right size if you if they're bigger than once you sew them together it's not going to be the right size for our quilt all right so we will go over all of that as we get there but at this point there isn't anything that you need to worry about cutting a different size than what is in the book I think we're we're going to be all good we do have some some options that we're going to do later but for now cut everything as is and don't forget i mentioned that some of these have the optional all right that black with the white dots that was the first one because we're going to use um, if you have the embellishment kit you're going to use that chalkboard fabric and so that black and white dot um, the little dots one that is an optional cut so you don't have to cut that um, another one that i didn't mention is that gray with the lines all over it, this one, one of the cuts, there's several cuts for that, but one of them is optional stripes. And if it's optional because we'll use what is in the embellishment kit. All right, so notice that when you're cutting, um, another one was the red swirls. This one has some optional cuts on it as well. Um, most of them we will need, but three of them for the peppermint are optional because we will use the glitter vinyl or some sort of vinyl that is an inner embellishment kit, or you have the option of using fabric if you choose. Um, there was one other one, I think. Let me see. Yep. Um, that one with the pretty snowflakes. Remember that pretty snowflake fabric? This one um, has options as well again for those peppermints. So you have the option of using fabric, this fabric for your peppermint candies, or you can use the glitter vinyl that is in the embellishment kit. And I'm gonna use the embellishment kit. I'm gonna use what's in there, but I will mention at the time that we work on that specific block, I'll say, don't forget, if you don't have this, you can use the fabric. All right, so you'll have options. All right, let's see. Um, I told you you need your, your batting and your stabilizer, all of these fabrics. You need the embellishment kit, the thread kit. There is a list underneath the video of what threads that we are going to use. Ah, did I forget anything? If you haven't bought the pop rollers, the orange pop rollers, I highly recommend them. I think that they're fantastic and I will show you how to use them. Um, but they, those are optional. If you have a certain way of doing your cutting, your set, um, but the pop rollers, in my opinion, make it really easy. I really like the pop rollers. Um, don't forget I said that you can choose to stabilize your entire fabric and then cut. That is a quick easy way to do it but then you have your fabric scraps have stabilizer already on them which in some cases is great it's totally optional um, or you can cut all of your fabrics and cut all of your stabilizer if you do it that way I like to cut my stabilizer a quarter inch smaller than actually a half inch so it's quarter inch all the way around so like if you're cutting a four and a half by four and a half piece of fabric I would cut my stabilizer to four by four. That way you can see which side is the front, which side is the back. And that works especially best on fabrics that you may not know the front from the back. So that's what I like to do if I'm cutting. Generally I cut, I put all of my stabilizer on my entire sheet and then I cut, it's just faster. But, um, but either way works fine. Don't forget to get your packets for organizing all of your fabrics to be able to get ready. For our start date and let me know when you're ready when you're all prepped and I'll let you know and we will create a start date 
my nose is stuffed up. All my grandkids just left and I'm just praying to not get sick. They get sick. I get, we all get sick every time they're here. Oh my goodness. So the goal is no sickness. So, all right, let's get started prepping for our We Whisk You a Merry Christmas project. So I ran into a problem that we're going to have to deal with. Stay tuned. I will tell you more later in this video. Hey everyone, quick note. So this one is that light gray with the lines all over it. This one I highly recommend putting your cutting your stabilizer a half inch smaller than the block. All right, so like this block is eight and a half by eight and a half. I cut my stabilizer to eight by eight. And can you see why? See what it does is it gives you um, a, a clear view of what is the front and what is the back because this one is actually pretty hard to tell from the front and the back. So when we lay down our fabric, we want to make sure that it is right side up and you can see that the lines are just a little bit darker, um, but it makes it really easy if you cut your stabilizer a half inch smaller, then you can see the front from the back pretty easily. I hope that helps. Hey everyone, so one thing I forgot to mention, um, I like to put stabilizer on all of my fabrics except for ones that are going to have chenille or any specialty things and I always try to tell you about those. So some people choose to only put stabilizer on their main fabric and that's fine too. Personal choice, you do you. I definitely prefer to have them on all of my applique pieces because then they're not going to pucker, they're not going to, they're easier to cut. That's one big thing is with the applique pieces you're not going to get all that fraying when you're cutting because of the stabilizer on the back. So that's a personal choice. So one other thing I want to mention is there are several pieces that I didn't have to use my um, fabric kit I used from my stash. I keep my fabric stash. And remember at the beginning of this video, I told you that you can choose to put stabilizer on your entire fabric or you can choose to cut your fabrics and then cut your stabilizer. Either way will work. And like I mentioned, often I will do the whole fabric because it's just easier and quicker um, and then I keep it in my stash for other times so that was pretty cool so like on this green one I already had this in my stash it's already stabilized so I just had to cut it up iron it and that one's good to go so don't worry if you decide to put stabilizer on your fabric on the entire fabric don't worry it will get used believe me I, this I was pretty excited when I opened up um, my stash and I was like oh I already have that one I'll stabilize that one's ready to go so keep that in mind either way will work totally fine whatever works for you um, so I'm still working on prepping I'm going to give you time to prep and I'm hoping that we can start next week. So um, let me know when you're done and when you're ready to start playing with our group project. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Okay everyone so like I said I ran into a problem and I want to talk about that real quick. So this quilt was made before Kimberbell came out with quilting. So for quilting in the hoop which we are going to do and since it's before, the cut sizes for the inner borders and outer borders do not fit with the quilting. So I want to talk about that real quick and give you some options. So if you cut before this prep video, then I'm going to give you some workarounds. And if you don't have enough fabric, I'm going to give you some workarounds. So let's just talk about that real quick. So for our inner borders, I did end up cutting mine, but I realized it um, thankfully before I cut um, so that it will actually still work for me. But so here's the thing. So when we do our inner borders and sashings, we generally have them be one inch of quilting and the fabric cut for the inner borders is one inch. All right. So one inch times with the fabric. Okay. So if we do it at one inch, the quilting will not fit. So it's not a problem. There's a few options. If you have enough fabric, then you can cut it to 1.5 inches. That's how all the newer quilts are um, the cut sizes in for Kimberbell. 
So that's what I did. I cut mine to one and a half inches width um, times the length width of fabric. All right, so that worked out for me just barely. You can see I have a couple that are, are shorter cuts than with the fabric, but I think it'll be totally fine. So that's one option if, if you have enough fabric. If you don't have enough fabric, um, you could, this is what I probably would do. I'm not sure, but there's a few really good options. So don't worry too much. So for um, your inner borders and your sash, you could do those different if you don't have enough fabric because I think it's um, like nine inches that we receive and if you do all seven of the sashings and inner borders it totals out to 10.5 inches um, width all right so you probably will not receive enough if you bought the original kit or if you bought the newer kit from our sponsor you most likely will get nine inches um, I don't remember exactly how much it is it says in the book here but um, either way I think I have it pinned here let me see yeah so we're supposed to get a quarter yard all right so a quarter yard and it is not enough to do the seven sashings at one and a half inches so the other option one of the many options I'm going to tell you one of them is that you could use a different inner you could use a different fabric for the inner borders and the sashings that would be super easy the sashings are the the lines that um, are between each of the rows on the inside of the quilt and the inner borders are the outer part all right so that go around the quilt they're not outer because there's also outer borders but let me try pointing it to you here in this picture to give you a better visual all right so these are sashings all the inside part and you probably already know this but I had to think about it a little bit so these are sashings you could use a different fabric for those versus the one that's going to go all the way around all right that's an option and it will be totally fine you could use green you could use um, whatever you want something that goes along with the quilt and that will be totally fine to do that all right the other option is you can choose not to quilt it um, I definitely do want to quilt it um, but it's a one inch they're little one inch pieces you could definitely get away with not quilting it if you choose another option is that you could quilt it and just let the excess run off onto the stabilizer because we're going to put our batting in you're not going to get batting in your seams we're going to do our batting beforehand anyway so it's not going to affect it you could easily do that you could still use the one inch quilting design which actually the quilting design is seven eighths what was it seven eighths of an inch so um, it will be close all right you'll probably have a little bit in your seams of the stitching but who cares right that part doesn't matter at all and any excess will run off onto your stabilizer so and it's not going to put batting in your seams because of how we're going to do our inner borders so that's another option so what do we have here you can use a different fabric for your inner borders and your sashings you can choose to not quilt it you can quilt it and let it just rot the excess run off onto the stabilizer since there isn't going to be quite enough fabric um, let's see, I came up with a few others. Um, not quilt, quilt with extra stabilizer, use a different fabric um, and um, use a different fabric for the sashing and the inner borders. All right, so those are the four options. Um, if you pre-cut or if you don't have enough fabric, if you have not pre-cut, then you can go ahead and plan ahead. That's what I did. I started looking for extra. I had a little bit more of this, so I lucked out, but I, I would be super fine with just using another green. All right, there's lots of... Um, pretty Kimberbell greens that would work. Look at this. Let's see. Lots of, I mean, really anything would work. Okay. This would be great as a um, inner border or a sashing. So plenty of options. So don't stress over it too much. I kind of panicked at first when I realized that the quilting design is not going to fit, but we can either make them a little bit bigger at 1.5 inches times with the fabric um, or if you don't have enough fabric for that I gave you some options all right so that's the first one inner borders and sashings the next one is the outer borders. so the outer borders we have the same issue and don't forget you could use um, if you're using the original fabrics if you were able to get them there's the black one or there's the white one either one will work fine but again it's going to be really tight so in the book we can cut four inch strips, four strips that are four inches times with the fabric. And if you do that, um, so one thing is on the outer border, I looked at the outer border quilting design and that design is three and one sixteenths inch. So if you want to go with four inch borders, that it 
it will be tight because you're going to have three and a half inches by the time you, you sew your seams together. It will total to three and a half inches, but it will work. All right. So you have that option for your outer borders. You can use a quilting design that and it will you can have the excess run off of um onto the stabilizer like i said up for the inner border same thing you you could have your inner if you choose to cut your outer borders at four inches you can make it work it will be fine the other option like i said before you can use a different fabric um you can choose to have the the quilting runoff on the side. You can shrink if you've got embroidery software. You can shrink your um, your quilting design. But really, like I said, this one is three and one sixteenths, and we'll have three and a half inches. It'll be super duper tight, but it should work. So don't stress too much over it. Um, I'm actually going to draw lines on on mine and and cut it to just to make sure that I get enough. So on the outer borders, let me tell you. I'm going to do mine to four and a half inches, but again, if you've already pre-cut, then you can have yours at four inches or you can use a different fabric. It's totally up to you. I am going to cut mine to four and a half inches. And um, for the outer borders, we need a half of a yard, which mine is 18 inches wide. That's probably universal. I'm not absolutely sure, but 18 inches. So 4.5 inches times four is 18 inches. So it's going to be super tight. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to draw lines on mine to make sure I'm cutting super straight to make sure that all four will be even. And there probably will be some excess. If you think about the quilt isn't this wide. So you could just wing it and as you get um, to that part, you could add on, you know, sew them together. People, cyclists are going by my window and I'm like, I should be outside. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, distracted. All right. So anyway, um, so on your outer borders, like I said, the quilting design is three and one sixteenth inch, the one that I'm going to choose for outer borders. And we'll go over that when we get there. Um, but so that will fit on your four inch um, outer borders if you choose to do four inches. I'm going to do four and a half like we do most of our quilts at four and a half inches so that I get that seam allowance, a quarter inch seam allowance on each side. So that will be a four and a half inch, maybe even just a tiny bit smaller than that but either way I'm going to go for um, the bigger so my concern with going with the bigger on the outer borders was I was worried that the pinwheels weren't going to work so we're going to do the pinwheels I'll show you a picture real quick the pinwheels are with our our outer borders so you can see them here so if you do your inner borders at four and a half inches like I'm planning on I was concerned that these pinwheels finish out at four inches just like the outer border so I was worried oh no I already cut all the fabrics for the pinwheels I don't want to have to redo that so I made one last night as a test um, to see how it was going to do all right I, I stabilized my fabric. I did all the things and you know what? You have plenty of room on this one. I cut it down to get it to four and a half inches. So don't worry about that part. Um, the pinwheels will work whether you're doing a four inch outer border or the four and a half inch, it will work. I, I tested it, it works, okay? So don't worry about the pinwheels, but the, for the inner borders and the outer borders, there is a little snafu that um, this book was made um, before the Kimberbell quilting, which means that we have a a little concern with um, how we want to do the quilting but like I said there are four options to make it work um, and the outer border fabric is a lot harder to get so is the inner border because both of these are um, retired but like I said if you got the full cut it should be an 18 inch um, it will be tight but it should fit and like I said if you choose to do the four inch that will work you'll just cut your pinwheels down smaller than mine and the, the four inch will work with the quilting. It'll be very tight, but it should fit. So I think it's all right. I just wanted to bring this to your attention. I was all excited that we don't have border blocks. We don't have a whole lot of changes on this quilt as far as cutting, but then I got to cutting my inner borders and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to bring this to your attention so that you're prepared to you decide you can have four inch outer borders you can have four and a half inches um, you can have the one inch inner borders or one and a half inches either way there's ways to make it work so don't stress too much um, but I will add all this information as like the the four options so that you can think about it and what you'd like to do um, but either way we're getting close to getting started to have our group project all right, one more thing. <laughs> this always happens. The first video, there's always so much information. 
Um, in fact, the first block, there will be even more. So batting cuts, I wanna talk about batting really quick. So I will tell you on every single tutorial, I will say, this is the size of the fabric we need. This is the size of the batting that you're gonna need. That batting information is not in the Kimberbell book because some people don't quilt it. We are gonna quilt this in the hoop. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do it. Don't worry. Um, and I will include what batting for every single video. I'll say you need this size batting. I will also create a spreadsheet after I finish prepping all my video, all of my fabrics, I will um, create a spreadsheet that says all of the batting cuts so that you have them to be able to add in into your packet um, as well. I will do that for you. I will include it in the Christian Creates Facebook group in the comments of this video um, on Facebook. On YouTube, I don't have a way of getting it to you other than to include a screenshot. All right. So when I create that um, batting cut guide, um, I will put a little note on the video saying you could do a screenshot here and then you could save that screenshot and that can be your cutting guide. If you're in the Kristen Creates Facebook group, I will add the entire spreadsheet there. That will be easiest for you to just download it. Um, but I don't have a way of attaching it onto YouTube other than for you to be able to do a screenshot. All right, so batting cuts, I will include all of that information. And again, like I said, I am going to include it on every single video as well. So every video I'll say, we're gonna work on this block. The, these are the fabric cuts that you need. These are the embellishments you need and you need this size batting, all right? And then also the quilting, I'll tell you that too, don't worry, all right? One other thing I forgot to tell you is that we are going to take a little break. March 14th, we will have at least 10 days off, probably closer to 14 days, um, where I'm not going to post anything. I'm not going to be in, in, our, in the Christian Creates group. I have a health issue that is coming up that I will be down for the count for a at least 10 days minimum, 10 to 14 days. Um, so that will be your catch up time. So don't worry if you feel like you're falling behind or you can't keep up. Um, I may work a little bit faster in the beginning of this project, just knowing that I've got these days that I'm going to not be able to work on our project. So know that you'll have that entire time off and our admin team at Christian Creates on the Facebook group, they are going to help with answering any questions, directing you to where you can find answers, but just know that we're going to work at a comfortable pace, but the beginning may be a little bit quicker. I'm hoping for a little bit quicker anyway, just so that you have time to catch up during the days that I will not be around. Um, so that just don't stress about timeline there. The videos will always be up. You can always come back to them and there will be plenty of days to catch up. One other thing I forgot to mention, so the quilting. Um, when you purchase quilting from the Kimberbell website, um, please use the link under this video that is a um, affiliate link for our sponsor, all right? They get a little kickback from Kimberbell when you purchase using their link. Um, the other thing is that this was made before they did the quilting, before Kimberbell came out with quilting with quilting. So I've already gone through and I've decided what I'm going to do on each quilt block. And I sent that information into somewhere to see if they might want to create a bundle for us. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Um, I should hear soon, but either way, I'm going to tell you which quilting design that I'm using and you can purchase that quilting design or if they create a bundle for us, great. If they don't, there is a jingle bundle available on the Kimberbell website. And we are gonna do the jingle quilt soon too. So you could buy that one and use those. You could use quilting designs from your stash. Whatever's gonna work, um, but hold off just a little bit to see um, where we're gonna land on that. Um, and either way, every single block I'll say, I'm gonna use this one. This is the size you need, whatever quilting design that you need. And I will give all of that information with each block.
And if you've joined me for other projects with Kristen Creates, I always ask you to set a goal for the project, the length of the project, the whole project. So this is a quilt that will take a while. Um, so I want you to set a goal. It can be cleaning out your craft room, catching up on old projects, exercising more, making sure that you're getting some movement in your body, um, trying out something new, learning something new, whatever your goal is, um, not eating sugar or eating healthier or just whatever it is. There's so many things that you can choose to do. I'm going to stretch on this one. So I am going to, my goal for this one is the word, my mantra for this, this project is going to be inspire. So I, I'm, my life is like an open book. You know me, right? But I'm going to push it a little bit further and I'm going to tell you some different stories of different things that hopefully will inspire you um, and hopefully I can be inspired as well. So my goal for this project is inspire and I'll go into more detail as we get started with this project. But inspire is my code word for this this entire project and it's going to be hard for me. I don't like it. <laughs> So yeah, I'll tell you more. I'll tell you about the how how I got started doing this. I'll tell you lots of stuff. You're gonna know Kristen really well um, by the end of this. But it's hard for me. I this is I don't like the spotlight at all. I would never have have put myself in front of a camera like ever. Um, and so it, this will be a stretch for me. This will be good. I'm gonna work at it, and I'm gonna um, share how this all came to be. But and hopefully give you some inspiring stories of, of different things that have happened in my life. And I hope that you'll share as well. You can always add comments in the, under the YouTube video. I, I love it when you guys interact and make it fun and it helps the YouTube channel somehow. I still don't understand the YouTube analytics, but anyway, that's my goal for this entire project. What is your goal? All right, and I always get a lot of questions about my shirts or sweaters. So I'm gonna always show you, try to always show you. This one, isn't this cute? This is from Designs by Juju. It's a cute little snowman. I love this one. And you know, appliques are so fun because you can personalize it with whatever fabrics you want. I, can, I used a pretty floral fabric. I added words on here. Um, what did it say? I don't even remember. So cold. <laughs> <laughs> so cold. I'm cold all the time. So this is a fun designs by Juju and it's got um, bling on it. Fun design. The sweater itself is from uh, Fred Meyer that I bought several years ago. So I will add a link, always add a link underneath every video to whatever design that I'm showing you for, for that day. I always add it at the very bottom at the of the video, a direct link that you can click on to purchase that design if you choose. 